Hello and welcome once again to Real Quality Wrestling. Every week we're going to bring you the very best of British and international wrestling. And on tonight's show, you're going to see Martin Stone face off against the anarchist Doug Williams. We've also got the Jezebel, Eden Black, the Real Quality Wrestling Women's Champion, facing off against the Canadian Portia Perez. But first, the chase for the Cruiserweight Championship continues. The final four faced off at Rebirth at your call in Bethnal Green. We had J.P. Monroe, we had Bubblegum, we had the Heretic Red Vinny, and Marty Skull. The final two of these would go on to battle it out for the Cruiserweight Championship in January. How did it turn out? Let's join Dean Ayers and Dan Reed at ringside. <laughs> Cambridge University's Marty Skrull. What a beautiful road. Ladies and gentlemen, representing Summit Wrestling, weighing 154 pounds from Cambridge in England, this is Marty Skrull. So there you go, Marty Skrull representing Summit Wrestling, which is an East Anglian promotion. Yeah, not that far from me. And here comes the second competitor in this cruiserweight four-way. It's time for bubblegum. I like bubblegum. The wrestler or the stuff you put in your mouth? Little of column A, little of column B. Okay. Very colorful star. Yep, here he comes. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, representing I holiday in Hubba Bubbaville. Is it cheap? Prices are a bit sweet, I'll admit, but you uh, know. See me, help me. And here comes JP Monroe. He's gooder than you. Gooder. Good For someone that says relax, he's full of energy in it. Maybe it means something else. And he's stolen Bono's glasses. Now he's a character. You stand before this court, accused of heresy. I have been impressed by this man. And here comes another old looking fellow. If you've never seen him before, make sure you're sitting down for this, folks. It's the heretic, Red Vinny. The thing is, usually on the outside of the ring, it's a safe place to be. Not in this match, folks. Representing Irish Red Wrestling, weighing 170 pounds from Dunshaw, County, Ireland. This is the heretic, Red Vinny. A unique look from the heretic. A unique style of wrestling. This guy defines high risk. But the other thing to note is we've already seen there is that these guys were all in the ring against each other at, back at Summer Brawl in the nine-man cruiserweight match where the, the last four qualified for this match. Absolutely. So they all know each other to a certain degree. Shades of Tiger Mask dead away, whipped himself through the ropes. They clashed. And Skrull tags in whether uh, Bubblegum likes it or not. Marty Skrull flips over. And, and keeps holding the legs there. That, that was a degree of intelligence, I'll show that. Oh, degree of intelligence, I like what you did there. And so, now shades of Steve Gray himself as Skull going for the surfboard. Oh, oh no. Couldn't get hold, that was vicious. Oh, that will really limit your mobility. So Bubblegum tags himself in, and now we've got Bubblegum against Marty Skull. Beautiful chain wrestling there from Bubblegum. I don't think Marty Skull was quite expecting no. chain wrestling like that from the high flyer. Well, Andy Quilden says it's a tag. You know, smart move from Skull. That's why he's at Cambridge University. Yeah. Would that be enough to actually win in matches, though? Yeah. 
Oh! Elbow there from the Heretic. Irish whip into the corner. JP stays well back. Oh, no, he tags him. Yep, Monroe tagging himself in now. And now these two are going to finally tie up. But no, Monroe goes behind. Picks him up. Oh! The Heretic trying to fire some back. Irish whip reversal. Tag, mate, this is where, if you're gonna wear someone down, you've really got to keep them away from the corners where there's another wrestler, because otherwise, they're just gonna be tagging in and out. Um, as you see there, absolutely, oh, he's not well, tagging, he's... Uh... It seems like we've found our first union here. Oh! And just, that's standing just Standing on his head! Irish whip into the ropes. Whoa, Bubblegum makes the most of this. Runs in, I told you. Watch, watch Vinny. Oh, oh, I told you, this guy is insane. Shining Wizard. Oh, caught him in the back of the head and the shoulders there. Nice. Still wisely rolls to the outside, does not want to be pinned. JP rolls out of the way. Tilt a while, backbreaker there. Nicely done. And, wait and the other side as well. And now we're going to see a trifecta of these. Oh! Yo! Roderick Strong eat your heart out. Catches his balance. Over. Lands on his feet. Just a vicious clothesline. Nothing pretty about that. Just a clothesline. And there's a running mafia kick. Takes JP down. JP slides to the outside. And the pace has quickened here. Yeah, I told you this was could break down. There's just a vicious Onsaguri kick there to the back of Marty. JP fans clear cheering for them man JP on the outside and now it seems like we're going to see a double superplex now bizarrely from Marty Skrull and Bubblegum oh, no, and there's JP and JP from behind seems like he's going to uh -oh. powerbomb two oh, points Tower of Doom and JP Monroe came off the best of that because he was underneath it all and Skrull out of nowhere rolls through hooks him beautiful pin in JP Monroe has been eliminated Skull's got one victory on his side. And oh! Whoa! Jumping, shining wizard, it's over! That is it! Bubblegum eliminates Marty Skrull as I nearly lose my voice from what a move! A series of kicks there. Oh, Beautiful! Threw his leg underneath him. Going for a shining wizard, perhaps again. Ducks. Heretic Red Vinny. Beautiful kick on the top of the head. The action is fast paced. We knew it would go like this. And Bubblegum is setting up for a, what, a DDT from the second rope? Or Vinny's trying to fight it off, and rightly so. Oh, headbutt there. Nothing pretty about that. And what is this? Both men. Now, Bubblegum seems to be trying to get out of the way of this, and Vinny is. Oh, this looks dangerous. Oh! Holy! That is all. Oh. That's gotta be it. Moonsault, rock bottom. That is it. The top rope single Spanish fly. Irish fly. What a match. So the heretic Red Vinny picks up the win, which means that he and Bubblegum will face off at No Pain, No Gain 2007 on January the 12th at York Hall Bethnal Green. And one of them will leave as the inaugural RQW Cruiserweight Champion. You share the passion, you share the excitement, you share the yearning to participate, but you don't share the skills or experience. All the wrestlers you see here are highly trained athletes. You are not. Please do not try this at home. Now it's time for some championship action as the real quality wrestling women's champion, the Jezebel Eden Black, faces off against the Canadian Portia Perez over to Dean and Dan at ringside. So here comes Portia Perez from Ottawa, capital of Canada. Brilliant. Beautiful city. Beautiful woman. This woman, you would know what to mess with this woman. Show some respect, 
no some respect. I don't think that's how you go about getting respect, actually. Porsche Perez, though, very accomplished. The things that Jetty was saying, annoying, but unfortunately true. She just, you know, give a normal introduction to both women. She's from Essex. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, yeah, just like each and every one of you bags. Weighing it at 126 pounds. That's about, I don't know, 30 stone? Roundabout? She is Jezebel. Jezebel. Oh. A little petition, which I didn't know anything about. Did you know anything about? I it? signed the petition. Oh, you probably printed it up for it. And here comes the Jezebel Eden Black. She is a fantastic representative of women's wrestling. Talk about intensity coming oh, down the rim. She personifies women's professional wrestling. Oh, absolutely. Yep. So, is Jessica going to keep her nose out of this match? As long as she keeps her voice down, you know, um, so I'll, I'll be happy. She looks like a, you know, fair kind of girl. She's, um, what? She's making her way. Dean? Well, it looks like she's coming over here to join us. Hey, uh, there's no seats. She can sit. Okay, here we go. RQW Women's Championship on the line. It's a defending champion, the Jezebel Eden Black against Portia Perez. I'm Dan Reed, giving commentary to not only you, the fans, but also to Dean Ayas, whose view is obscured. But what a lovely bottom it's obscured by, I must say. It's can she hear me? She can beat me up. She can hear you, Dan. Fantastic and, uh, athlete is that Jetta. So, Love her. can you, uh, can you, oh, she's, she's just uh, moved for the moment. Uh, oh no, she's back in my way again. Can you, can you take this on your own, Dan? Yeah, I can do this. You keep quiet. Portia Perez continuing on her ways with these fans. So much for international relations here. And now it looks like we're going, going for a, a test of strength or just a, a knuckle lock to begin with. And Portia Perez just not having none of this with a Jezebel. Black. The Jezebel just wants to get back down to business. She wants to wrestle. And here we go. Well, Portia Perez just trying to get in the head of the Jezebel. It's her first title defense. She's oh. going to be nervous. Well, look at that. Straight into a double underhook. Jezebel takes control immediately and then goes to work on that left arm. Nice armbar there. Jezebel, a bit frustrated there. Went to use the fist immediately so that Jezebel in black went underneath. Nice reversal there by Portia Perez, 19-year-old Canadian. Underneath. Goes Jezebel. Nice reversal. Absolutely now to a top rest lock. Portia Perez uses the ropes. Backflips over and now she's in control. Nice reversal there. Now let's think. I've seen a Canadian wearing pink and black doing that move sometime before. Hmm, can't say I have a cool one. Jezebel. Dear me, Reed. Your education needs updating. Nice, Terrible. rolls through. I think it's a law, if you're Canadian, you have to wear pink and black. Nice armbar now from Portia Perez. Nice reversal there. Beautifully done, and now the Jezebel, Eden Black. Is that the same way if you're from London, you have to be miserable? Right, right from behind comes Portia Perez. Now, the thing is, it's what you brought up a good point, of course, the pink and black, okay, we've seen uh, such wrestlers like Brett the Hitman Hart wear pink and black and Owen Hart. Owen Hart, who I was thinking of in that uh, rope, uh, rope flip, by the way. Absolutely as well. And of course, both those two learnt a lot of their craft by wrestling here in the UK. You're Absolutely, seeing, You're yes. seeing uh, representatives of two great wrestling countries collide here. A real quality wrestling's rebirth event here. 
The York North Bethnal Green. Oh yeah, Canada's got Ooh. Oh Canada's oh, got such a, a thriving wrestling scene. Absolutely. It's a great country. I love Canada. Oh, it's a beautiful country. It's, it's like America without the attitude. It's wonderful. Oh, big chop. Nice chop there to the Jezebel Eden Black in the corner. Not a fair break. So I think the Jezebel Eden Black can retaliate those chops. I don't think Portia Perez realizes that. Well, the Jezebel Eden Black, she likes to use lots of strikes. Oh, I'm sorry. Like that. Yeah, lightning quick, whipping effect on those chops. She mixes oh, the hole. Well, we saw the drop kick to the back of the Jezebel oh, earlier. Oh, Portia Perez tried to get out of the way of that drop kick, but didn't really manage to avoid too much of it. Oh, no, unsuccessful. But, yeah, you'll see mainly strikes and technical, you know, British wrestling from Eden Black, but Portia Perez stops her dead in her tracks. Nice neck breaker there from Portia Perez, and now a series of stomps. Keeping her down. Oh, point to the elbow there. Nicely done, right in the, the center of the back on Absolutely. the spine. A lot of technique there, using, she used those uh, hips to whip herself round, driving that elbow in, hooks the leg. See, she hooked the leg, all her weight was on the stomach, so Jezebel's shoulders were free to, were free to lift there. And the Jezebel, nice instinctive move there, rolls onto her knees and her stomach, can't be pinned if you're not on your back. Forearm shot to the back there. Nightmare over. How's your view coming along, by the way? Well, oh, she's just moved. She's uh, decided to uh, harangue the fans, so, so I'm okay. And now, uh, neck vice here, pushing down on the head, lifting up on the chin. Jezebel trying to make her way up. Fans suddenly behind in the corner of Jezebel. The I was going to say, anything uh, working over the neck will be a nice setup for the, the kosher pickle, which is uh, Portia Perez's finishing move. Absolutely, it's like a tornado. Tomakazi, also known as an unprettier. Well, if she breaks that out tonight, you'll know all about it, as will uh, Eden Black. Absolutely, now we see the Jezebel in the corner trying to regain that wind while at this right time, Portia Perez should have been making the most of it. She telegraphed it from behind Jezebel. Showing that she's still in this match. Oh, running clothesline, ran right through Portia Perez. Sets her up now. Fisherman suplex, this is what she's defeated Jetta with numerous times. However, Portia Perez able to roll through it. Jetta, sorry, Jezebel unable to hook those fingers. Oh, runs right through, Mafia kick. Almost takes the face of Portia Perez off. Hooks the leg. Notice how her, her weight was over the shoulders of Portia Perez. Yeah, and the Jezebel now really building some momentum up in her own favor. And now forearm shivers there. Irish whip into the corner. Over the top goes Jezebel, rolls through. Nice agility and ability there. Catches her arm drag now. She's going for that triangle lock now. Going for a triangle choke. Very unusual to see that in, in a wrestling match, let alone a women's match. Absolutely. She's got the arm bar in there as well. If you, you don't have a tap out from the arm bar, you'll be choked out. Oh, she gets to the ropes and what that move does, it just cuts off the the wind, the air and the, the blood flow to the brain Twist as the well. shoulder and also a lot of the pressure on the elbow and the forearm. Follows of mixed martial arts, no doubt know the effect of that move. A lot of titles changed in martial arts promotions such as UFC thanks to that move. Forearm shivers, these girls retaliating. Another series of forearms now underneath. Whiplash effect move going for now, no, countered. They were both jockeying for position underneath. Oh yeah, Portia Perez obviously knew what to expect there and did not want to get caught in that move, but I think she made it. Here him. comes that whiplash oh. move on the back of the head. That's got to be it. That's it, two. No, unbelievable. Oh, great resilience from the Canadian there. Portia Perez being cheered on by Jetta. Both of them wearing pink and black. What a team. Oh, here we go. This here is the, the kosher pickle, no, reversed. Good move there by the Jezebel. Well scouted by Eden Black, yeah. Ocean Cyclone Suplex was what? Here we go again, she's going for the kosher pickle. She hits this. And she hits it, that's gotta be it. Surely no, she landed badly herself. Absolutely. Perez is hurt and she can't take advantage. She can't capitalize on that. One has to believe that if Portia Perez had been able to have hit that move, this would be it. She didn't get all the weight down on those to the side and 
And no, it's a kick out. Only just, but it is a kick out for Eden Black. And you Absolutely. Know, sometimes when you're the champion, luck goes your way. Wait and a minute, she, she went down to pick her lucky. up. Oh, triangle she choke went again. to pick her up. And Jezebel Eden Black makes the most of that, captures the arm. Heads in the That's there. it. Tap out. That's Jezebel. it. Eden Black retains the title with a triangle choke. You don't see that often in pro wrestling, but I'll tell you something, Dan Reed. Luck was on Je uh, Jezebel Eden Black's side. If uh, Portia Perez had hit that kosher pickle and landed herself okay, I'm convinced that would have been it. And here comes Jetta now. Oh, big oh. ball strikes in the back. Well, why? Well, we know why. Yeah, you, no asked, competition. The, you asked the question, but it's blindingly obvious why Jetta wants a title shot. She wants to be the RQW Women's Champion. She has done nothing to deserve one except lose to Jezebel and get some plain petition that you printed up at home. I did not print that petition up, but Portia Perez doesn't look too impressed by what Jetta's done. She's trying to go the Jezebel Eden Black into giving her a title match. And it looks like she's going the right way about it, but oh, she's tearing up the petition. Well, that's what she thinks of the petition, obviously. Well, it's what I think of the petition. And I think that's what everybody here at the York Court Festival Green thinks of the petition. I just want to see the Jezebel lock horns with Jetta, just so I can see Jetta get her comeuppance. If we see striking offense from the Jezebel Eden Black against Jetta, she might just be the one to shut her up. God bless her if she can do that. You share the passion. You share the excitement. You share the yearning to participate. But you don't share the skills or experience. All the wrestlers you see here are highly trained athletes. You are not. Please do not try this at home. So now it's time for the main event. These two competitors have been told on several occasions that they would face each other, and it finally happened at Rebirth in York Hall and Bethnal Green. Martin Stone faces the anarchist Doug Williams in a true clash of the titans. Let's join Dean and Dan at ringside. And Martin Stone, one of the fastest rising heavyweight stars I have seen in a long, long time, a man I know very well, the governor, the former IPW UK heavyweight champion, a former FWA tag team champion. Yeah, he um, didn't lose that title either. He was stripped to that title in here. I'll tell you what, there is perhaps the most frightening guy in wrestling today. Not just it's British not wrestling, in wrestling, show. maybe the world. Oh yeah, I mean, just look at the man. He just exudes intensity, doesn't it? Here's a guy who likes to go, people ask, what are you doing for Christmas this year? You know, you're gonna go around the family? No, he's gonna go beat someone up. That's what he's gonna do. Christmas will come early for him because he will go beat somebody up. And check out the Real Quality Wrestling website where you can check out where RQW will be nearby and back here at the York Hall in Bethnal Green on Saturday, December the 16th. No doubt you'll be seeing uh, Martin Stone beat a few more people up. Oh yeah. It's what he does, it's only CV. I've had to turn down an invitation to a fancy dress party to be at RQW next week, next next month. Really? Yeah. Turning on him, he'll beat you up for it. I bet you wish you were there. I tell you what, 
This match will be hard hitting. What a great way to main event British wrestling's rebirth of your call. You see things such as, uh, you'll see that you learn a lot from guys such as Johnny Saint from the World of Sport era, but you'll also see a lot of the Kuro Rosie's pro wrestling, Noah's strong style, this type of wrestling in him as well. A real clash, a real hybrid of wrestling styles will be on display here in this main event. Oh yeah, Doug Williams, a global warrior, 13 year pro compared to just four years on Marks and Stone's part. So real entry experience to Williams. Martin, they're pretty much the same height. Martin Stone with around about a stone advantage in weight. But this is the first time these two have ever clashed one on one. This is going to be something special, Dan Reed. Oh, absolutely. And I'll tell you something as well. I know from talking to Martin Stone and working with him, his ambition is to crack Japan. Doug Williams has done that. Doug Williams has a regular contract with Pro Wrestling Noah in Japan, the number one uh, company in Japanese wrestling. Absolutely. What would it say? What shockwaves would it say that sent, would be sent across to Japan if Martin Stone were to win this tonight? And, and the thing is as well, is on Sunday, December the 3rd, um, Doug Williams will be jetting back off to Japan to work more for Pro Wrestling Noah. Yeah. He will have, if he loses to Martin Stone, he will have this loss over his head and, and everyone in Japan will know about it. On the other hand, of course, if Doug Williams wins this match, he just proves to everyone he's still the boss. You know, Doug Williams is pretty much regarded across the country as Britain's number one wrestler. Oh, he is. Uh, whoever you talk to, they'll, you ask them, who's Britain's greatest wrestler? Pretty much everyone will say Doug Williams. Yeah, the, you know, the greatest active wrestler today, I'd say Doug Williams. And so he is, uh, he's got a, a mantle to defend, as it were. So goes for the quick cover there. Yeah, absolutely nice backslide there. Wrestling maneuver there from Doug Williams. Shoulder block. And I notice already Williams being the slightly lighter wrestler. He's using speed. Beautiful wrestling maneuver there. Goes for it. He's using his speed stick and move tactics light on his feet. And there was an experience edge there as well. Stone charged in. Doug expected it. Headbutt to the stomach. Gut wrench suplex. Stone on the outside. Yep. You know, get his thoughts back and perhaps uh, change a different tactic. If you're usually in his corner, what would you be saying to him? Well, you know, it's it's clear at this point, Doug Williams has gone all out offense to try and uh, just tell Martin Stone, you know, as I said, I'm the boss. Stone very wise here, just regrouping. He's got to try and take the pace of the match away from Doug Williams because Doug has, albeit the first you know, five minutes of the match, Doug Williams has dictated this. And so Stone has got to manage to get things to his tempo and his control using that power and just the brawl, you know, he brawls and he uses the power tactics. Doug Williams, more of a technical wrestler, as you can see from the Absolutely. side. Absolutely, I mean, usually when you go into that tie up there, you'll see the stronger the two get the advantage, but Doug Williams' technique allowed him to take that head straight away. And there's that experience advantage I was talking about. Whoa! Nice surprise, Doug, there. The roll up kept hold of him. Small package from Martin Stone. Not able to hook both legs well enough, though. Irish whip now, the stronger Stone. Off the ropes, going for that Revolution Diddy team, but gets caught overhead, belly to belly, suplex, and now it's Doug Williams who takes to the outside to rethink his strategy. Martin Stone learned from the mistakes, learned from the opening segments, and now it is Martin Stone firmly in control here in York Hall. And uh, you know, the uh, the situation's been flipped on its head. Doug Williams, the one now going outside the ring, just to just to take the edge of things just to take some steam out of martin stone you know this is the main event we've got a good time limit there's no hurry as Absolutely. it were doug williams is used to going a long time he wrestled 60 minutes in stifling oh, doug heat williams. in ring of honor absolutely the final uh, four i was at ringside to see him wrestle 60 minutes in the the hottest day of 2006 in barnsley against steve carino you know, and this is a man, Williams, who holds victories over Steve Carino, Beautiful over Christopher man. Daniels. He holds, a, you know, he even holds a pinfall victory over the late great Eddie Guerrero. Absolutely. So this is this man exudes class. He is the you know, Britain's greatest wrestling ambassador. And Stone, win, lose or draw, Martin Stone is going to come out of this match the better. Beautiful <laughs> move there. Nice bridge and bow and arrow backbreaker manoeuvre. On top, keeping hold. Not quite sure how Martin Stone's going to be able to get free of this. He's going to have to try and break Williams' grip. Oh, mate, well, there you go. Just manages to roll through. 
Doug keeps on top though. Look at how he's look how he stands on his toes, applying all that pressure. Stone able to get behind though, and both men in great shape as well. The thing is, both of these men can probably go those 60 minutes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I mean, great look, if you look at the, the the shape that Martin Stone's in now, I mean, he's really he's dropped a lot of weight, put a lot of muscle mass on. Fantastic shape from Martin Stone. Doug Williams' conditioning and shape never been in question. And interestingly, now it's Stone who's pretty much playing Doug Williams' game of the technical mat wrestling. Yeah, rolls through though, but uses the, those legs to break it. There you go, you're not going to out-wrestle Doug Williams. Absolutely not. Lance Storm, another guy he holds victory over, and you don't get many better technical wrestlers than Lance Storm. No, absolutely not. Underneath, beautiful chain wrestling here, beautiful wrestling from Doug Williams. Sets on there. And look at that. Doug Williams got up rather than being rolled through into a pinfall attempt of Stones. Great thinking by Williams there. Now both men come face to face. Stone takes the leg. I, it's a case of Stone is showing just how good of a wrestler actually Stone is. A lot of people just see him as a hard hit and brawler. Don't take his wrestling a bit away. I mean, look at the look at the toe hold that he's got. He's also got his left foot on the foot of Doug Williams, stopping him from breaking away. Not only that, but I don't think Doug Williams would have prepared for a wrestling oh, no match chance. with Martin Stone. No so chance. it's great thinking. You know, Stone, as much of a brawler in that he is, he's a very intelligent man. And you got to wonder if that's what what went wrong at the beginning when uh, Doug Williams had to take that breather as well because Martin Stone went in there, hit the series of wrestling pinfall sequences. Oh, nice roll through, like a bucket butterfly lock there. But he's got in, instead like a reverse chin lock. Almost like a Juju Gitami. And it's almost now a matter of pride that Williams wants to out-wrestle Martin Stone to prove to, to his opponent and to the fans that he is number one. Yeah, like I said, Doug Williams is the boss. And it's like his... His mantle, his uh, position is under threat from this this young pretender in Martin Stone. It was, you know, there's about 10 year age difference between the two. And uh, it's definitely one generation to the next here. And Williams really wanting to prove that he is still the man. Stone's trying to keep hold of him, just oh drops him on his head like a pole driver. Definitely. Uh, well, what a great way to break a neck. And Oh, Stone will take credit for that. Very happy. And also, that will be... Uh, well, anything that weakens the head and the neck is a perfect setup for that unbelievable... London awesome Bridge. Awesome London Bridge DDT. Both of these men have got unique and lethal finishing moves. I've never seen anyone kick out of the, that suspension, the hanging DDT that Martin Stone uses called the London Bridge. Similarly, I've never seen anyone kick out of Doug Williams' amazing chaos theory rolling German suplex. That rolling German suplex has beaten everybody and their mother. And I think... Maybe not their mother, but it's beaten everybody. Indeed, I think that, you know... Oh, a bit of attitude from Stone there, but I do think, you know, if either man gets to hit that finishing move, you can you can count to 100. Nice. Textbook vertical suplex there. Covers, look how he holds his arms down as well. Great camera workers there. Well there from our guys here in RQW. <laughs> he can just hear the impact of those forearm uppercuts. Well, we said it at the beginning about hard hitting. Those forearms are about as solid as you're going to get. Perfectly legal in wrestling, of course. No closed fists. Trading forearms here. The thing is, it's a matter of pride for Doug Williams to try and out-wrestle Martin Stone. It's a matter of pride for Martin Stone to outstrike Doug Williams and to yeah. beat a harder of the two. Oh! Was that a DDT, a suplex, or what? Snap! Brain Buster. Oh, That's that. how I'd call that snap Brain Buster there. Wow, I'm surprised Stone got up from that. Beautiful, I've, I've never seen that before. Me neither. And you know, Doug Williams evidently- Right on the back of the head as well. Yeah, Doug Williams evidently pulling out all the stops, you know. It's, and all the moves that will lead up to the chaos theory. Yeah, in, you know, in wrestling terms, it's like getting out your best china. Absolutely. You follow me? I understand. Good. Snap there, there positions Doug Williams down and just that's a lot of weight coming down on the point of the knee. That's 17. 
Yeah, that's 17 stone 12 coming down. 17 stone 12 in your sternum. Ouch. Forearm shots there to the top of the head, like cross shots there, coming across the bridge of the nose too. You break that nose, your eyes well up, you can't see. You're in a big, big disadvantage there. And now the 17 stone 12, as you said, he's the heavier of the two, now putting all his weight on the anarchist Doug Williams. Well, ref Chris Hatch right in there. Williams not going to quit from this, but it's certainly going to wear him down. And also, of course, stretching out, stretching out that neck. Now this time he's taking hold of the arm. It's almost, almost like an abdominal stretch now as well. You can look at the, the left leg of Martin Stone keeping the left arm of Doug Williams back while stretching on his abdominals. Yeah, all of that right side of Williams' rib cage going to be stretched out. Doug Williams showing his, he was keeping his fingers in as well, keeping his fingers moving, showing that he's still in this. And now a recliner maneuver here now, like a camel clutch. But now he's just pushing down on the eyes. And that's just plain vicious, but that's what we know Martin Stone Yeah, for. romp for Tardist. Oh yeah. I mean, he's had some unbelievable wars with some people. Yeah, not, and a lot of them not even in wrestling ring. <laughs> yes. Ask him about his criminal record. Beautiful. A and brother. through the ropes goes Martin Stone to the outside. It's been about nine or 10 years since I've seen, oh, I've seen Doug Williams do a move like that. And now he's just thrown Martin Stone into those steps and Stone's le landed badly. Yeah, he's holding on to that knee. I mean, Doug Williams was once known as the human torture device because of the many submission moves he could put you in. And, and, and Doug seems to be focused on that knee. And though this is something I wouldn't expect from Doug actually. He's, He's tied his leg up in that barrier and now stomping on it. I'll tell you what this is. I, I'll tell you what he's doing here. A couple of weeks ago in Orpington in an IPW UK show, Alex Shane from the FWA made an, uh, an uninvited appearance. And he basically took out Martin Stone's left knee. I'm telling you now, Stone's had a history of a few knee problems anyway. I bet you anything you like, that knee is not 100%. Martin Stone wouldn't tell anyone about that. He's not that, you know, he, he's not an individual who'd, who'd focus someone's attention on an injury. But I guarantee you that knee is not 100%. Doug Williams has done his homework. Doug Williams knew exactly what was done to Stone at Orpington a few weeks ago. And this, this could really be the turning point in this match because we've just found a chink in Martin Stone's armor, and Doug Williams intends to capitalize on it 100%. Look at him now, really grinding that in. Well, he step over toe hold there. Keeps, the, keeps hold of that leg, hits those ropes. Wow. And Body Stone. splash there, all on the knee of Martin Stone. Stone in a hell of a lot of pain, you don't see that often. No. But he is definitely in trouble with that knee. Martin Stone needs to pull something special out to give himself a breather Well, here. in order to get the advantage over Martin Stone, you have to pull something out, okay? You need to find something that will keep your advantage because Martin Stone will just keep coming at you. And what Doug Williams doing right now, why not be the cleanest, most professional British wrestling moves? But it's certainly getting him the advantage. It certainly could be successful. And it is the more experienced of the two, the veteran, Doug Williams, who is out on top of this. Doug's been in the business long enough to know that it's all about getting those W's too. Oh yeah, and the Doug Williams knows all about the British tradition that we spoke about of picking out a body part and yep. working over it. And that right knee, well, it didn't, uh, it, no attention was drawn to it. Stone hasn't wrapped it up any differently to how he normally would, I think, to try and deter any attention. But now a figure four, if Doug can get that yeah, locked in. Those tree trunk like legs of Martin Stone. Doug trying to position himself. He's got it. He's got it now. I tell you, this is one of the most genuinely painful moves in wrestling. Championships from all over the world have traded hands because of this very maneuver. Careers have been ended because of this very maneuver. I'll tell you something. I once said to, said to a guy, put me in a figure four leg lock. I want to know what it feels like. 
because I'm stupid like that. 30 seconds like that. later. Oh, he's reversed it. Stone's reversed it. I tell you what, this will hurt Doug uh, and Stone as well. So Doug will want to get out of that. And both men still in it though. They've got that. Oh! Ow! Holy. Okay, that'll, that'll. Wow, are they yeah. still locked in there? It's oh, broken no, no, the hole. We mentioned earlier, there's no pretty blue mats on the outside here. That's just solid concrete floor. And, and those, those knees just went smash into those concrete. They went knee first. Yeah. While locked up in that figure four, landing hard. Well, that's, that's a way to break that hold, but, but certainly not the, not, not the least painful method. But well, I'll just Doug finish. standing. What? What I was going to say was basically you feel your shin snap after about, you know, 10 seconds in that hold. If that. If that, yeah. But now they're in a perilous position, both Trading athletes. Trading forearms on the outside again. We mentioned earlier, D Martin Stone will oh, make sure he's getting the advantage. Do you yeah. see that? Oh, what's going Front on here? Oh! That was almost like a London bridge it was, on, it was, on the ring apron. It was the London bridge on the ring apron Stone, right in the corner. And Stone's beside us here. He can hardly walk, but he, well, we said Martin Stone needed to pull out something special to give himself a breather, and I think we've just seen that. Stone's look at him, trying he's shaking to, that leg as well, yeah. trying to get some feeling back into it, trying to get the ability to walk on it, because at, the, at, at that time, he was having a hard time putting any kind of weight on it. Well, I'll tell you, from, you know, he's, yeah, he's shaking some uh, movement back in and now suddenly Martin Stone is showing signs of life and look how he's pushing Doug away from the ropes making him oh that was wise move there he's only four years into business but he's clearly learned a lot that's because I used to manage him was also trained by Dino Scarlo I believe you'll find that, yep. that has something to do with it Dino well. Scarlo and Tony Scarlo all the guys in drop kicks in Perth Fleet in Essex Stone telegraphs that move there runs up going for that High cross body, nice. beautiful. That sequence of moves, well known in British wrestling. You can catch your world of sport on the wrestling channel as well. Series of knees, this is what Doug Williams is known for. Knee to the corner, knee off the ropes. We know what's coming next, it's the bomb scan knee drop. If Doug hits this, it is all over. Stones up. Normally men are- Oh, nice. Yeah, flying uppercut there. Another example of improvising. But Off please. the ropes comes Doug Williams. Ducks the clothesline. Ducks the elbow. Doug with a lot of momentum. Another flying uppercut there. Oh, I was going to say, please don't mention bomb scares in the York call. Not after what happened not, there. Not, not after what happened there. <laughs> but Doug Williams now going for the, leg, the knee drop again. I think this is where it got the name from. Oh. He hits it this time. Bomb scare was more than just a scare. It landed one, two, get the... No! Doug Williams. The he, shoulder was up from Martin Stone. Not just anyone kicks out from that. Williams that, shaking his head. Absolutely. I mean, normally it's the trifecta of knees, but there was also two flying uppercuts followed by the knees there. Still not enough to put Stone away. Stone from underneath. Reversal into the corner. Just a vicious lariat. Stone, another lariat, keeps hold of that arm over the shoulder. Samoan crash coming oh, on. Oh, nice. Hits it. Trifecta of moves there too. No. 17 stone 12 crashing down on top of you. That's all in the ribs too. That's yeah. a great way to break ribs. And what a deserving main event for the rebirth of British wrestling, courtesy of RQW here at the York Hall. Side Romford leg sweep. And now into that cross face. Crossface will Doug tap. And this is one of the most and, and difficult Martin, moves to escape oh from. Oh yeah, and Martin and Stone will just keep pulling as far as he can. He'll snap a neck, he'll snap a shoulder, he'll snap as much as he can. Look at the archway. Doug trying to roll through, hooks the leg for a pin in position, forces Martin Stone to grab the rope to break that. If there's anyone that knows a counter to that move, it's Doug Williams. And again, that move will soften up the neck and the shoulders for the uh, London Bridge, but Stone talking oh. about the neck and shoulders. Going for that oh my God! Bam, he hits it. That One, be it. two, three, it's put no. away, no! But did you notice Williams just rolled the shoulder? He didn't kick out. Stone can't believe he it. He had no choice, he couldn't kick out. When Martin Stone hit that lariat, he didn't just stop. He kept on running through like an express train ran through with that running lariat. Doug Williams only just rolls that shoulder up, setting up again. Doug said, half Nelson, dangerous! Oh. 
what a suplex and another one. How to break her neck. Series of suplex all on the back of the head. There's that judo background of Williams coming through. Absolutely, two, three, no. Plenty I could tell you about Doug Williams' judo background. We'll save that for another day. So, Lutie, right now we are in the thick of the action here at the York Hall. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that Martin Stone has any feeling left in him. Struggling to his feet and slumped in the corner. Doug, over for that. Oh, oh. Revolution DDT. He's put away the best for that move. Here Chaos, Theory. Chaos Theory suplex. Can he get Can in? He get it? He's a big man, is Martin Stone. Struggling. Yo! But look at that. Williams grabbing the back of his head that Stone has worked on. Absolutely. And that's why Stone's worked on it. If Doug Williams had only been able to hold that bridge. Yeah, you can't bridge if your neck's broken or cracked that, or that, injured or whatever. That's, that's why wrestlers train their neck so much. But Doug Williams unable to hold the bridge of the chaos theory. And I've told you, I said earlier, I've not seen anyone anywhere in the world kick out of that. Over the top goes Doug Williams. Forearm shiver. Shoulder block to this mid section. Oh, oh Wait a minute, London Bridge. It. London Bridge. Oh, he hits it. He hits it. The the one, one, two, three. One, two, three. Oh my God. Martin Stone has pinned Doug Williams. Martin Stone has pinned Doug Williams. What an upset. What a result. Make an impact. Why don't you? Martin Stone does it here. Tokyo, are you listening? Doug Williams has just been pinned clean in the middle of the ring by Martin Stone, the governor, the new generation of British heavyweight wrestling. What a match, what a moment. Martin Stone, I tell you, in years to come, he will mark this day down as a turning point in his career. What a great match, what a great rest. Look, you can see how much it means to him. Yes. Britain has a new star. His name is Martin Stone. And Dan Reed, he is the governor. So Martin Stone will be the real quality wrestling representative at the huge interpromotional tournament taking place on December the 16th at York Hall, Bethnal Green. And we'll be there as usual and we'll show you the matches on forthcoming shows. Don't forget to join us next time when we'll be following Bubblegum as he takes part in the huge under 23 tournament from where in Hertfordshire. That's it for this program. We'll see you next time and we'll see you at ringside. Goodbye. <laughs>